Do you love stuffed acorn squash? Guess what? This is even easier. It's unstuffed stuffed acorn squash. It's a casserole and all the goodness that goes into a stuffed squash in a form that you can just eat quickly. It's delicious. It's amazing. I think you're gonna love it. Let's make it. So we've all seen stuffed acorn squash or stuffed whatever you wanna think. This is unstuffed stuffed acorn squash in the sense that it's the stuffing and a really good stuffing, but we're not gonna actually stuff them in half of a squash. I think that can sometimes be cumbersome to eat and it's a lot of squash on your own to eat a whole half sometimes. So instead of stuffing them, what I am doing is deconstructing it into a great Let's call it a hot dish or casserole. This is a great side dish for Thanksgiving if you want one. It's also just a great thing to have on a weeknight. We're gonna make it more of a meal with sausage. You can leave that out and make it vegetarian too, which is really great. So what I'm starting with is squash. Now I have two types of squash I have used and I want you to see them because I did it for color, I did it for beauty. So there's dumpling squash or sweet dumpling. And then there's acorn squash, the more traditional green. It doesn't matter, they're both squash. They're both gonna taste the same. I do it for color, I do it for variety. I love to grow all types of winter squash because one, they're just beautiful to have sitting on your counter, but then to use also. So what I do is always use a grapefruit spoon after I cut them in half, which yes, cutting them in half is never fun. It's not necessarily easy. You know what helps? A sharp knife. So always have a sharp knife. That's gonna make it much easier. Take out the inside. I use a grapefruit spoon. It has those little tines on it that are kind of sharp and they just get in there and get it all out really well. So what I am doing now is just slicing it. And you can see I'm trying to go even slices because that's gonna help it roast and bake evenly. So usually when you do a stuffed acorn squash, you're going to keep it in half, just in halves, and then you're gonna roast those until they're softened because you need to be able to eat them. Well, in this case, what we're doing is we're gonna actually just roast it like I would for a salad, like I would for anything. And you're gonna say, wait, the skin, Caleb? Oh yeah. If you have followed me, you know I am a big proponent of saying, eat the skin. The skin is delicious. And when it's roasted, it has a little bit of texture, but it becomes softened. And so you can actually just leave it on. Look how beautiful these are, by the way. So what I'm doing is just slicing them into slightly more, I would say it's bite-sized pieces, but I want them to have a little bit of size in the sense that once we put this all together, like a casserole, I want you to be able to see what they are. I think that's important. So what we're gonna do now, you notice I have them on two baking sheets, even though we're just using two large acorn squash. You want them to have space around them. If they overlap and if they sit on each other and are piled up, they're gonna steam and they're not gonna roast or caramelize. So now I'm gonna add the oil, which is super important. When you're roasting anything in the oven, you need the oil. What the oil does is make sure that you actually have that contact with the bottom and then it sears it and creates this caramelized crust almost. So next important thing, if you ask me, is going in with your hands just quickly and making sure it's coated in the oil and then putting it out into an even layer. What this does is again, make sure that everything is coated in that oil and it just makes sure that's gonna roast evenly. And that's what you want on both sides because it actually usually browns on the side of contact with the parchment or the pan. I just do parchment so it's easier to clean up instead of all that browning. That's the only reason. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna salt them well. Salt is what's gonna give it flavor. It's gonna give it seasoning. And we're gonna actually just sprinkle it over because you want it to be over everything. And I think instead of putting it into a spoon or something, it's much easier to take your fingers and just sprinkle. That gets the salt actually placed more evenly over everything. And I always use kosher salt. So all my videos, all my recipes, they're always written for kosher salt. So once you have that over everything, and I, I just really feel like I missed one over here. And yeah, it's that important. We're then gonna just make sure we pepper it. So we have those two things, and you can see now instantly how beautiful it is. And we're gonna pop these in a hot oven and they're gonna roast until they're caramelized. While the squash is roasting, which takes a little bit, we're gonna start by cooking quinoa. Now I'm using a tricolor quinoa. It's just for color. If you're not used to quinoa, it's a seed. It has lots of healthy, nutritious fats in it. But what's also great is when it cooks, it's kind of like a rice. So it almost has a starchiness, but it's not. And I just love it. So I have, what I have here is a vegetable stock. And the reason I'm doing a vegetable stock is because it has flavor. You could do a chicken stock, but why I'm doing vegetable is with one swap, this whole dish becomes vegetarian. Just leave out the meat. So I'm gonna let that cook for a little while. And while it's cooking, we're gonna get everything else ready, which is really our flavor components that kind of make it a stuffing, but not. 
So to start, I have some onion here I've been chopping. We're just doing a medium onion and chopping it up. Now, I am cooking meat, and sometimes on certain dishes when we cook a meat, we just cook maybe the onion or whatever else we're doing right with it, but that can make it a little soggy. For this dish, I think it's important actually to cook the celery and the onion first, saute them just slightly. So I have some oil right here in a skillet. I'm gonna heat it up over some heat. When you heat up oil or you heat up your skillet first, it actually sautés better because you want that sizzle when you add things. It helps it not stick as bad because that oil is actually heated to the correct temperature. So when you see something say heat your oil, whatever it is, that's actually important and it does make a difference. So I'm chopping it up and you can see my celery. I'm not dicing it really fine. I'm chopping it. There's a difference in those. And that's because I want it to have some texture when it's done. So what I'm going to do is check my oil here. I'm just going to make sure it's all over that skillet. I'm getting excited about all this. I'm gonna check my quinoa so it doesn't boil over. Cause yes, that can be a problem, can't it? And now what I'm gonna do is just grab all of my, you know, on a true kitchen that's used for filming, you would have the stove right beside you. I use a scooper because my stove is over here beside me. So I'm gonna put this right in. And do you hear that right away? Our oil was heated correctly, which is what we wanted. So I'm gonna put all these vegetables right in here. And I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and some pepper right away because I like to season as I go and make sure every layer is seasoned well. I think that's super important. So we're gonna put this on, we're gonna let this saute, and then we're gonna keep going. We're almost finished sauteing the celery and the onion. So I have some garlic here I chopped up, some thyme leaves. I'm doing some sage right now. So you can see, I'm just putting the sage on top of each other, by the way. Kind of roughly gonna give them nothing special. Now, you can see what I'm using are flavors really of the season, of the moment. This works really well for Thanksgiving if you want it to. It also can just be a great seasonal dish. It doesn't have to be for Thanksgiving. I kind of like to leave my sage a little bit bigger. So what I want to do now is that it has softened the onion a little bit. It has actually started cooking the celery, but still leaving some texture, which I think is important. I'm going to grab all these and put them right on top. So we want some good flavor in this. We want that garlic. We want those herbs to really come through. And so we're just gonna stir those in here and let them just warm up for you know a few seconds. We're talking 30 seconds because that really brings out their essential oils. It really makes them just seriously, instantly it's fragrant. So what I wanna do is go over and grab the meat. Now I'm using turkey sausage, not because it's Thanksgiving. What I do like about turkey sausage is it's a little bit lighter, not quite as fatty, but it has great flavor. And I just think it's a good option, not just for health reasons. I just like to have it on hand. So we're gonna put it right in here and we're gonna break it up into pieces with this mixture. And then when it's done, we'll mix this with the quinoa, with a few add-ins, and it's gonna be just, it's just gonna be delicious. Everything is pretty much ready to go. And so now it's just putting it together and creating a casserole of sorts. So we have the meat mixture here. You can see that cooked up. It's all done. It smells amazing. I have the quinoa over here. Look at that, it fluffs up. How do you know when quinoa is done? Mostly the liquid should be gone. So see how if you go down, that liquid is all absorbed in the quinoa? That's what you want. Look how beautiful and fluffy it becomes. I, I love quinoa. Now the squash is done too. So you can see what I really want on the squash are these darkened bits. And if you think it gets too dark, it doesn't. That is so much flavor. And you want that crispiness. You want that caramelization. Seriously, this is, to me, this is a snack. I keep this roasted in the fridge. I'll put it on salads. I'll just eat it. I'll eat it as a side dish. What we're gonna do though is kind of just throw it all into the baking dish. And then we're going to carnage, just start mixing everything together. We're gonna do it in here first. So I have my quinoa. We're gonna put all this quinoa right into this meat mixture. And what is nice about this is, this is hearty enough to be a meal and it's unique enough and delicious enough to be a great side for Thanksgiving or for just any occasion. I actually love making this you know, when friends come over because it's using things of the season. It has great flavor. You can make it vegetarian, you can make it not. So it can hit all those different notes. Now to this, I wanna add some lemon juice. Lemon juice brightens everything up. So a little bit of citrus goes a long way sometimes. And you know, we have a lot of strong flavors. We have the sage, we have sausage. And what lemon does is it just kind of makes this pop. And I'm not doing enough that you're gonna just taste lemon, but you're really gonna notice how delicious it is. So just let me get that all down on one plane there. And we're gonna add in some, to me, delicious textures and flavors. So we have some 
roasted pumpkin seeds. I think that's super important because you want them to have more crispiness since they're gonna be baked again, but also the flavor of being roasted. We have some dried cranberries. That to me adds a little pop of sweetness that is just, ah, oh, so good. I forgot a couple of the pumpkin seeds. I'm gonna make sure I get those in there. I hate leaving them in a bowl. And then some feta. You could use a goat cheese. Crumbled feta to me just has uh, a little bit of that brininess, which I think is important. So I'm just gonna stir it all together and we'll just now mix it. I reserved a few of the squash here on the side. I, I put them all in, but I jumped the gun because I wanna be able to place them once all this is on there too. So now we have what would be a stuffing and a delicious stuffing for inside of, but you know, of any squash, but of acorn squash. And I just think it's less, I don't know, it's less pretentious, less tedious, less annoying maybe even to eat and to serve when it's like this and it's unstuffed. So this is really truly a deconstructed, unstuffed, stuffed squash, which I think is kind of important. So we're just gonna mix it slightly so we get a few of those squash pieces in there. And what we can do now that we've reserved a few though, is a few of them now are on the bottom, a few of them are mixed in, but then we have all these ones I just took. I'm gonna place these over the top and just work them in a little bit. And I want you to see the squash. To me, that's kind of the star of this dish. And some of you are gonna say, man, Kip, this is a weird dish. Yeah, it is. You know, some of you ask, what do you eat on a daily basis? You don't eat always all the comfort foods or all the heavy foods. No, this is what I eat on a daily basis. I love to take things I grow, take things I love, and just make a meal out of them. And that's what this really is. So as you can see, you see the bits of squash, you see all that goodness, the quinoa. Guys, I'm hungry. I don't know if you are, but I am. So one more thing to finish this off. If you wanna make it vegan, leave it off. But we're gonna put on some Parmesan cheese. So we have the brininess of that feta, but Parmesan on top adds a nice little browning effect in the oven. And it just adds a seasoning. You know, it's a, it's a sweet, not sweet, but like salty, funky, to me almost nutty flavor that you can get on top. And once it's kind of worked in there and it gets browned in the oven, magic happens, right? So I'm gonna throw this in the oven just to warm everything through to get that cheese browned and we can eat. Here it is in all of its glory. You can see that when it comes out, it looks pretty much the same. You get some browning on the Parmesan. What I love about it is it's a medley of smells of aromas, but of flavors that are gonna soon be hitting us too. And that's what I love. It's a great, I mean, look how beautiful a presentation this is. If you do wanna have it on Thanksgiving table or buffet, let's be honest, we all do buffets pretty much anymore. I love though passing meal. We still do that at grandma's. We pass the food and that is special, but buffets are great. So this is when you can just serve it up. Now remember, if you want it to be a vegetarian dish, you can leave out all that meat, but look at that stuffing. And then since we're scooping, see how we get pieces of the squash with the stuffing. You don't have to just sit there and worry about, you know, having a whole squash and eating it in front of people. It's awkward, it's stressful. This isn't stressful, this is just delicious. So you get like a piece of squash, then we can get some of that stuffing with it. Mm. Mm. You know what I love about this? It's reminiscent of a Thanksgiving stuffing. You have the sage, you have the thyme. Even the sausage has those flavors that you expect in a stuffing-like application. But you have then that uniqueness. So everything is a little bit more bright because we add the lemon juice. Doesn't taste lemony. Everything has a ton of flavor because it's seasoned well. And it has some great textures with the quinoa, with the celery, with the sausage, with, ah, uh, over here, all those little dried cranberries. I love them. And then even the skin on the squash adds some great texture. This to me is a great meal with the sausage. It's a great side dish if you want a different kind of stuffing or just a unique side dish for Thanksgiving. This is your go-to. It's really delicious. It's one of my favorites. I hope you make it. Most of all, I hope you share this video around. Even if it's not for you, it might find someone else to see, hey, this is easy. If I can do it, you can do it. Anybody can do it. Check my website, wiseguide.com for this recipe and all my other recipes. And until next time, just make something delicious. You're gonna enjoy it.